Are we ready to praise God? Please, if we are in for second service, can we move together for people that have the back? Let's come together so that, yes, everyone can be together. Thank you. God bless us as we do so. to ourselves, we've been welcoming ourselves, but if you know you've not welcomed somebody beside you, can you say welcome? Welcome in the name of Jesus. We are happy to have you. It's good to see you here. May you be blessed as you've come in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, well done everybody. Let's begin to worship God. Let's lift up our hearts. Let our hearts be connected to the Father this afternoon as we worship Him in truth and in spirit. Let's give Him the worship, the praise, honor, adoration. He deserves Give Him praise. Worship God. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, that means everything. Let every part of me bless the Lord. Let my soul, my heart, my mind, my hands, my feet, my teeth, my tongue, the water that flows, the blood that flows in me, let it bless the Lord. Say, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Forget not all his benefits. It is him who forgives our sins. Bless the Lord. Let every part of me bless the Lord. We bless you, Jesus. Oh my soul. 
worship. Command your soul to worship. Say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Every part of me, bless God. Say, all that is when I sweat is filled. The hand from there. The from there. And my time has come. Till my soul is blessed. Till my soul is with your grace on earth. Say, ten thousand years. Ten thousand years.
He's your God, He's your God, He's your God, He's your God. Ay, 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 ay. Your Savior, your Healer, 
Jesus. He's breaking every chain. He's moving every mountain. Barriers on our ways. He's removing obstacles. He's mighty and wonderful. His power is great to break our chain. He is mighty. He's mighty. He's here with us. He just wants you to believe that he's the one that has conquered the grave. He has conquered the grave. He has given us that freedom from every sin, from every bondage. He has healed our sickness. That is who he is. Just begin to speak to him. Speak to Jesus. Speak to Jesus, the Savior, the Savior, the healer, the liberer, lifter of your head. He's your helper. There is no God like him. He's here. He's here. He has conquered the grave. He won it already. He won the victory. He has the victory. He won the victory. He has given you the victory. Come and declare, Savior, 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 Savior. You are the healer. You are the provider. The lifter. You break chains. Oh, Savior, that is who you are. We bless you, Jesus. Oh, we lift the voice as we celebrate in your house. Thank you, Jesus. Savior, you can move the mountain. Our God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. He has conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, Author of salvation, You rose and conquered the grave. Jesus, You conquered the grave.
Thank you for all the wonderful things you've done for my family. Thank you for all the wonderful things you've done in the place of victory. Brethren, let God hear your voice this morning. In the name of Jesus, as we lift up our voices and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the wonderful things you've done for me. Thank you for preservation. Thank you for protection. Thank you for provision. He answers prayers. Thank you for answered prayers. Thank you for my going out and my coming in. Thank you for the works of my hands. Thank you for the gift of family and friends. Let's just begin to say thank you to Jesus. Let God hear your voice, brethren, this afternoon. As we lift our voices to him. Father, we thank you. We can never thank you enough. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. In the book of 1 Samuel 30, from verse 13 to 14, there's a story of a Ziklag, when Ziklag was, con was, was consumed, and David had asked the Lord, that should I pursue, would I overcome? In other words, would I overcome? And uh, God told him to go ahead. But in verse 13 to 14, as they were proceeding, the Bible says, Then David said to him, He met a man, a man that had been, um, that was part of the people that came to conquer Ziklag. He says, David said to him, To whom do you belong and where are you from? And he said, I'm a young man from Egypt, servant of an Amalekite. And my, servant, my master left me behind because three days ago I fell ill, sick. We made an invasion of the southern area of the Cherethites in the territory which belonged to Judah and of the southern area of Caleb and we burned Ziklag. God did not give the details of how this, how David was going to conquer. But there was a man that was met by the ways, by the, by, as they were going along. So we are going to be asking the Lord for sensitivity in this period. That as the Lord give, launches us into an in that progress, we are going to say, Father, help me to be sensitive to the human helpers you have arranged for my unhindered progress. Help me to be sensitive as you connect me to them. Help me to be sensitive as you connect me to the human helpers you have arranged for my unhindered progress, for my testimonies and for my miracles at this time. All the human agents, all the human helpers, all the connectors to my testimonies, all the connectors to my unhindered progress. Help me to be sensitive to them. Help me to be able to recognize them. Help me to be able to identify them as you bring them across my way. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we have prayed. Amen. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9, it says, For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. We are going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, open a great and effective door for me. In this month of unhindered progress, let's turn that to prayer. My God and my Father, I declare in the name of Jesus, Father, that you would open for me a great and effective door. Let's declare in the place of victory, the Lord will open for us the, the great and effective door in the name of Jesus, even in this month of unhindered progress. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we declare an opening of great and effective door in every area of life, even in for families, for individuals, for your church, in the name of Jesus. Thank you because it is done. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. We call that in that, in that former verse, verse we read, it says, and there are many adversaries. We are going to be handling those adversaries. The Bible says in Matthew 18, verse 18, it says, Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We are going to join me as we say, Father, I bind every force or power resisting my progress and open doors. Let them be crushed in the name of Jesus. I bind every power or force every force, every power resisting my progress, resisting my progress, resisting my progress in this season. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind them. Let them be crushed in the name of Jesus. Let them be crushed in the name of Jesus. Every force, every power resisting my progress in this season. Almighty God, 
I bind them in the name of Jesus and I command them to be crushed in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we have prayed. A living amen. amen. Matthew 14 verse 30. It says, but when Peter saw the strong wind, he became frightened. As he began to sink, he shouted, Lord, rescue me. Lord, save me. We just sang the song, Savior. We are going to talk to the Lord. We are going to pray for anyone in the place of victory that may be frightened by circumstances around them, by situations around them or their families. We are going to ask that the Lord will rescue them. He specializes in impossibilities. There is nothing too hard for our God to do. I want you, if you have someone close to you, can we pray a prayer of agreement? As we pray for, for the place of victory, we are going to pray for anyone, for anyone in the place of victory that may be frightened by any circumstance or any situation around them or around their families. It could be health, health uh, concerning their health. It could be situations even at work. It could be situations in their careers, in their, in their academics. Almighty God, we ask that you would help them. We ask that you will rescue your people. You will rescue your sons and daughters. We cry to you for help. If you are in that situation, talk to the Lord. Ask him to help you. Ask him to rescue you. Here, yeah, Peter shouted to Jesus. He said, Lord, rescue me. Ask that the Lord will rescue. Ask the Lord, the Lord will rescue. In the name of Jesus, Father, help your people. Help us in the place of victory. Come and help us, oh God. Come to our head, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you because it is done. Shall we begin to celebrate Jesus for answered prayers? Let's celebrate Jesus. Father, we celebrate you because we know you have had us. Unto him that heareth prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, we celebrate you. Join those hands together for Jesus. If there's someone by your left, by your right, just say happy Sunday. Good afternoon. God is good indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome to church. Our uh, God is good indeed. Hallelujah. Uh, first of all, I just want to appreciate God Almighty for the privilege to bring the word this afternoon. And to also appreciate our pastor, uh, senior pastors in the house, pastor and pastor missus, for the privilege to bring the word. Uh, and to the entire leadership of the church. And to everyone that worked tirelessly uh, in the background to make sure that the work here in the place of victory continue to flourish. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word that you have uh, given to us this afternoon. Uh, we pray that as we open your word, we ask for a heart to receive in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that you give us the grace to uh, put your word into action in the name of Jesus. That in return, the glory will be yours, uh, but most importantly as well, that we'll continue to enjoy unhindered progress in the name of Jesus. Be thou exalted, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. As our custom here in the place of victory, we have anchor for the month, and this month 
is our month of unhindered progress. Uh, the anchor scripture is Proverbs 418, and pastor has been bringing, special grace of God, bringing the word to us. Uh, we've looked in the very first Sunday on the unhindered life, uh, that the new creation reality, uh, the package of the new creation reality is that you and I will live a life of perpetual victory. Hallelujah. Victory comes with the package. Hallelujah. Uh, that we should not limit ourselves uh, despite challenges, despite obstacles, that we should triumph, we should win uh, despite the challenges that may uh, come our way. Uh, and we also will be looking at navigating hindrances through meditation. There is power in the word of God. There is power showing the word of God, munching on the word of God, making the word of God part and parcel of you. Uh, like God was speaking to Joshua, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your heart, but you will endeavor to meditate on it day in and day out so that you observe to do all that is written therein. He said, then you will make your way prosperous and you obtain good success. Hallelujah. So we'll be continuing uh, in this vein uh, this afternoon. And, and the objective of God for our life is that we'll continue to maximize his full provision. We'll continue to obtain and maximize the full provision of God. Hallelujah. I want us to read very quickly Acts of the Apostles chapter 9, 26 uh, to 28, and then we'll read verse 31. When Saul, uh, who later became Paul, arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to meet with the believers, but they were all afraid of him. They did not believe he had truly become a believer. Verse 27, where God's word is coming to us this afternoon. Then Barnabas brought him to the apostles and told them how Saul had seen the Lord on the way to Damascus, how the Lord had spoken to Saul. He also told them that Saul had preached boldly in the name of Jesus in Damascus. Verse 28, so Saul stayed with the apostles and went all around Jerusalem with them, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. The church then had peace throughout Judea, Galilee, Samaria, and it became stronger as the believers lived in the fear of the Lord. And with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it also grew he grew in numbers. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. By the grace of God, I'll be speaking to us um, on, on what I've titled, Harnessing uh, Sponsorships for Unhindered Progress. Harnessing, uh, utilizing, maximizing the place of sponsorships when it comes to unhindered progress. A sponsorship is a word or a sponsor. It's, some, it's a word that we probably have heard in different forms. People can sponsor a project. Uh, people can uh, support you to do something. And so that person is my sponsor. Uh, in the place of visa, for example, we hear a lot, especially here in church, about sponsorship visas. Uh, but we'll be looking at the subject of sponsorship in a different light uh, this afternoon. Uh, and the starting point really is that God wants you and I to operate in the top tier of, of every sphere, whether in your organization. It is the will of God that we progress. Hallelujah. And as a matter of fact, the grace of God that God has given to us is a grace that should empower us to proactively continue to improve and navigate ourselves towards the top level. Hallelujah. The grace of God to, in our life is not the absence of work. Um, you've heard pastors say it so many times. Um, any, uh, any understanding, any faith that believe that God is absolutely responsible, it's an irresponsible faith. Hallelujah. Uh, we are able to be proactive because of what God has given to us. God has empowered us to be productive, to be proactive. Hallelujah. And what is in the top table? A um, few months ago, uh, by the grace of God, in my place of work, uh, I've been privileged to uh, pick some higher uh, managerial position, and I've been, been in this role for a few, few months now. And I think a few days ago, somebody was asking, who has he been? What was it like being, uh, being a manager of XYZ? I was like, up there, there are lots of sharks. Hallelujah. Up there in the top tier, there are lots of sharks. And most times, if you are starting off, you see yourself like a little fish. Hallelujah. But it's okay to start as a little fry, as they would say. Just like if you look at Numbers uh, 13, they went to this land and they noticed that, ooh, there are lots of giants here. It's okay when you step in for the first time to see yourself in relative terms um, that you are like a grasshopper. But what is not allowed 
is for us to remain in that mindset or for us to remain in that mentality of a grasshopper. Hallelujah. Why? Because it's a very dangerous territory to be in. You see, at the start, these big sharks, with all their experience and pedigree, they will sympathize with you. You are, you are new in the career. You are a newcomer. You are a fresh starter. They will try to support you. But you see, if for some reason you decide to remain to be a small fish, at some point, these sharks will get hungry at some point. And guess what? If they want to eat, they will start with the little fishes around them. Hallelujah. So there is need for us to proactively, which is what we are looking at this month, to continue to think progress. Never settle for less. Never settle for one level. Philippians 4.13 said, I can do all things through Christ who does what? Who strengthens me. You know, Aaron Ford will say, if you say you can, you are right. If you say you can't, you are also right. But it's important that as we navigate our life, our life should always be with the, uh, the faith mindset. You know, that Hebrews chapter 11 verse, uh, if you read from the verse 33, he said these heroes of faith, despite their challenges, despite all the issues they had, he said true faith, they conquer nations, hallelujah. True faith, they break through barriers. True faith, they were able to win battles that the men may say is unwinnable. True faith, they were able to obtain the promise. True faith, these heroes of faith were able to turn weakness into strength. Hallelujah. Faith has a voice. Hallelujah. Faith, faith can speak. And the voice of faith is that in the midst of challenges, that is where champions are made. Hallelujah. That as the heat gets heater or gets higher as the pressure gets keep building up that is where champions are made we don't run from battles but champions are, are often baked they are developed in the midst of challenges the voice of faith is a voice of victory and dominion that wherever i step upon any career i step upon i can obtain victory i can dominate and become the pace setter in this organization so the objective is not about just succeeding or you just want to survive. You just want to succeed. You just want to grow in that level. No, it's not about that. John chapter 10 verse 10, the Bible says that we will have life and have it more abundantly, overflow. So it is the will of God for you and I that we thrive. Hallelujah. We thrive in every sector that we find ourselves. And I think the key here is about self-perception. How do you see yourself? Hallelujah. You know, the grasshopper mentality is that self-defeating mentality. That mentality that is self-limiting. You know, there's a glass ceiling in this organization. People of my kind, uh, ethnic minority, there is so much we can progress in this organization. You see, that is a wrong perception about yourself. Hallelujah. Our attitude should be a positive self-perception. How has God created you? What has God deposited in you? There is greater that is working for you. Greater is he that is in us than anything that may be happening out there. That we can win any war. We can win any battle. Hallelujah. We can arise and grow our career to any top level. As much as our mind is able to receive, as much as our mind, our heart of faith is able to receive, we can climb as high as our faith is able to receive. Hallelujah. So the limitation really is not what men are set for us. The limitation is not what organization are set for us. The limitation most times is the self-perception that we've set for ourselves. Hallelujah. So it is important that we continue to involve and get rid of this mentality, what I call the grasshopper mentality, that is just focused on the weakness, the things that you cannot do, all the negative stuff. No, focus on the strength. Don't allow yourself to build on the inabilities. No, focus on the abilities that God has given to you. Focus on what God is able to do through you and let that propel you into action. Hallelujah. Let that propel you into what? Into action, proactive. And I pray that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So think top table. Think top tier. In your current role, how can I get to that point where I begin to steer the direction of this organization? How can I get to that point where the light of God in my life can actually start making positive influence? Not just within the four walls of organization alone, but even around the world. Hallelujah. So that is where sponsorship becomes important. 
Because like we often say, it takes a village to raise a child. Hallelujah. If you want to go fast, they say, go alone. But if you want to go far, you have to go together. It's about building the right network of people. It's about identifying the people that are able to offer you a voice in rooms where you are not able to either be or the tables that you are not able to sit. So who is a sponsor? A sponsor is somebody who has a pedigree. A sponsor is somebody who has a power. A sponsor is somebody who has a connection. A sponsor is somebody who has an influence. And he or she can use those connections, those influence, to be able to offer you visibility, to speak for you, to be able to offer you, to be able to vouch for you. They put their integrity on the line, they, they put their reputation on the line, and they say, I know that Pastor Jeff is that person. He is able to do it. Hallelujah. That no matter, he's able to offer that excellent work. You know, at times you ask people, like, oh, you are, you are a high flyer, you are flying so much in the organization. What's the secret? And they'll tell you, ah, a strong performance. Ah, I have passion for my job. Ah, I work tirelessly. I burn the midnight candle. But the reality is that if you pitch them a bit more, push them a bit more, what really is the secret? On top of your professionalism, or on top of your highly decorated CV, is that little ingredient of a sponsor. They will tell you, I had a sponsor. I had someone who was able to support me to climb the career ladder. And it is my opinion that most times, even from my own experience, most times we are over-mentored, but under-sponsored. When it comes to mentorship, it's something we want more of. That is why we have things like Facebook and Twitter and the rest. We have so many role models. Role models are good. But there's a level you get to in your progression in your career where you start thinking about sponsorship. Who is able to represent me in that room? In that board? Who is that voice that is standing for me? What then is the difference between a mentor and a sponsor? Both are very important in our life, even as we trust God for progress. You see, sponsors will advise you. They will use their experience. They will use their knowledge. They will use their connection to advise you. They will advise you to develop. They will encourage you to advance. Why not apply for this? Why not start thinking about it? Why not take that short certification, for example? Sponsors, uh, mentors will offer you insights. Insights into how the dynamics of how things work. Insights into the dynamics of how organizations work. That is fantastic. Mentors will offer you support. They will encourage you. But it's different from the role of a sponsor. A sponsor is somebody that acts on your behalf. They are that voice. Those people that vouch for you. Those people that want to drive you on. They are enabler. They want to enable you for that next role. Uh, if you want to get promoted to that next role, this is how you need to put that together. This is what you should, the uh, indicating factor. This, th these are the things that you should be addressing. The, the, these are the thresholds that you should be meeting to get there. And one unique characteristic of a sponsor, a sponsor offers you the champion visibility. There are so many things that we do that people don't know of. Hallelujah. There are so many things we are capable of doing that people do not know of. But it takes a sponsor to be proactive, to say, do you know that this person can cook? Do you know that this person is good at baking cake? Do you know that this person is a good communicator? Do you know that this person is a good manager? There's a way you will say it about yourself. But when a sponsor steps in, a sponsor amplifies what you are able to do. You know somebody said, a sponsor opens the door. It is a sponsor that takes everything that they know about you. Everything they know that you want to do. Everything that you want to be, they will use their voice for you in the room that you are not in. They use the knowledge of who you are, what you know, those intrinsic attributes about you that they know to start promoting you. A coach will talk to you. A mentor will talk with you. But it's a, a sponsor that talks about you. Hallelujah. And I really like... Um, this from the, um, the Leadership Institute. Because sponsors offer opportunities. Uh, it may look a bit small, but these are salient questions that we should start asking ourselves. 
Do you need advice and feedback for your advancement? You need a mentor. Do you need help to build your skills, qualities, and confidence? You need a mentor. Do you need help to craft your career visions and plan? You need a mentor. Do you need someone to give you high-profile assignments? Maybe you should do this and that. Now we start gradually teaching towards a sponsor. And it's possible that a mentor can also double as a sponsor. Some transition in that way. Hallelujah. Do you need someone that is committed to your long-term success? A mentor can do that. But a, a sponsor can also step in in that direction. Do you need someone that will give you high visibility with many uh, company stakeholders? Somebody who is able to use their network, their leverage, to be able to offer you visibility. Now you need a sponsor. Do you need somebody that is able to connect you with influential people? You need a sponsor. Do you need somebody that is able to share insider information with you? You need a sponsor. But with a little caveat here. I'm not saying somebody that is um, able to uh, bend the rule or start breaking company policies to, to, to give insider information, no. Somebody that is able to share information with you so that you actually get what you deserve. Hallelujah. There are so many things that you deserve or because people don't know about you or because you are not presenting in the right way, somehow you are missing out from there. You know, someone, I was just reading now, someone was saying that I have spent the, the first 10 years of my career talking to the wrong people. Networking with the wrong people. You need the right people. You need the people. Like I said, the role models are good. You look people, you look for example. People you can go to and look for advice. But as you progress and you can see this arrow going up, as you begin to progress in your career, you should start thinking about sponsorship. Someone that is strategically positioned within an organization that is able to offer you that voice. And a little formula that you can use. Look at where you are now in terms of your career. And when I say career, even in your spiritual journey, your progression, because everybody has to grow. You can be a self-employed, for example. Look at where you are now. And then look for someone that is two steps higher. At least two steps above you. Hallelujah. And start looking. To, is there something they are doing that aligns with your own ethics? Is there someone's work that you admire? And you hope that one day you will get there. Hallelujah. Start making those connections. Because when it comes to getting a sponsor, it, it can either happen organically. Somehow your path cross, or you went to a conference and somehow the work you do, like, oh, I'm interested in that. Something just happened organically like that. Perhaps sometimes they are your mentors and they're also offering that role of a sponsor. But with what God is giving to us this month, it's about taking action. Most times, it will happen inorganically, where you have to be proactive to start looking for who is that person in the organization. Who makes decisions in this organization? Who employs people in this organization? Hallelujah. Who fires people in this organization? Whose work in this organization do I admire? And start looking at how do I get there? Because either the sponsor will directly advocate for you or they have the right network of people that are able to offer you opportunities. Hallelujah. A sponsor is an advocate. Do you need someone that is able to stake their reputation to advocate for your promotion, you need a sponsor. And I think the point here is that we grow upwards. You can grow in what you do. That is fantastic. You can grow in the same level. You say, oh, now oh, I, 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 I can bake this. I can, I, I, I can retrofit this and make this look good. But not in the same level. Let that growth be upward. Hallelujah. Let it be progressive. You, you always want it to step to that next level. You know, I was making uh, the, the instance even during the first service. You can say, oh, you are baking cake. But even the baking of cakes, they are in levels. Hallelujah. You can bake cake for a small group of people. You can bake cake to sell in the local market, like Swansea, for example. But there's another level to that where you are baking cake for, for multinationals, for supermarkets, where your cake now has a position in the chefing where you go to Tesco, and they say, oh, this is your brand that is there. That's another level. You can bake cake where you start baking for organizations, events are happening, and you are the one that they consult. You start aiming higher. The question is, in this organization you are targeting, who are the people who are making those decisions? Is there a way you can connect with them or reach out to them? Hallelujah. And I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. I'm talking about people with real influence. You know, I, I was, uh, again, giving this in the first service. Uh, in Nigeria, there was a company then I think I needed a placement and very, very competitive. 
And then I remember I went with my application, my CV then, uh, like, in, in the gate there, you can see that there are lots of people with suits, all with tie. Oh, yeah, 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 I can, I can, I can help you, blah, 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 like, ah, okay. And then I was like, who is this person? Who does this person really know? So, they know someone that knows someone that knows someone that knows someone that knows the gardener in the organization. Those are not the sponsors I'm talking about. People with real power. People with real pulling influence. People that really manages the organization, that makes decisions. Those are your targets, hallelujah. And don't put glass ceiling on yourself, no. Just keep following their work, make contact. And that is where small talks is important. Remember, the role of the sponsor is to give you visibility. But sponsors are not mind readers. Hallelujah. If they don't know what you do, and that's why someone will say that when you get to a level in your career, it's not about the people that you know. It's about how many people know you, know what you do. How many people in detail know that you are a good singer? I mean, when I'm talking about people, people in the table of decision. How many people know you for what you do? So that is where that conversation is important. And that is why I'm always an advocate of small talks. Every opportunity you have, make sure that you are talking. Whether it's just a coffee table, it's a two-second conversation. You are just walking from the car park. Oh, you come to church. It's just small talk. Oh, how are you? Fine, fine, fine. Do you know yesterday oh, I, I was actually uh, learning how to cook um, Indian meal? Because tomorrow, pastor will be in a meeting. Somebody like, if only we know somebody who knows how to cook Indian meal. Pastor will say, I know someone. It came from small talks. But if you haven't mentioned it, then that information is not there. And if that information is not there, how can they make you visible? Hallelujah. And I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. Are there examples of sponsors in the Bible? The, the scripture we read in Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. See, if you read from the very verse 1 down, we know Saul. I mean, Saul was persecuted. The Christian was creating a lot of havocs. And even in that chapter 9, he was actually going on this evil mission. And thanks to the grace of God, he had an encounter with God on the way to Damascus. So he was a changed man. And straight away, he started his own ministry. But the ministry has to start in Jerusalem. And the Bible says he went to Jerusalem, where there's a more established group of believers. The Bible says when he came in, they refused to accept him. Why? We don't know this man. We don't know what he does. Who is he? What's his pedigree? What's his track record? Is he reliable? All we know is that he's a sword that kills people. But it takes a sponsor, in this case Barnabas, who came and stood. If you read that Bible, the Bible says literally, Barnabas brought him to the apostles and began to tell them of the things that God has done through Saul, the things that he has seen, how God has spoken to Saul. He told them how this same Saul has started preaching the gospel. A sponsor. Jesus Christ, even before he started his ministry, it, God has to sponsor him. God has to pronounce that affirmation. This is my beloved son, Matthew chapter 3. In whom I am well pleased. Joshua worked with Moses for so many years. And you assume that the Israelites, they knew Joshua very well. But even for Joshua to become a leader, the Bible says Moses had to bring Joshua and put a stamp of approval. That this man has worked with me. You can trust him as a leader. Again, a sponsor. Somebody vouching for another person. Paul will later became a sponsor to Timothy. As he was sending Timothy to the church in Philippa, he wrote a letter that this is my young steward, Timothy. You can count on him. He has worked with me diligently. You can trust him. He has integrity. He's reliable. He's able to deliver on the job. God vows for Job. Have you considered my servant Job? That is a devout man, a, a blameless man. You can, he can be trusted. Even while Satan wants to say otherwise, he said, I can vouch for this Job. There was a time when David needed to bless someone in the house of Jonathan. He said, is there anyone still alive in the house of Jonathan? Thank God there was somebody in that table. Ziba said, ah, I know Mephibosheth. It's my prayer that when there is need for someone to be blessed, may there be someone in that table who is able to bring your name forward in the name of Jesus. The king had a dream, Genesis chapter 41. And he said, ah, if only we had someone who can interpret dream. Thank God the cup bearer was there. He said, ah, I've seen Joseph. I've seen Joseph. He has the spirit of God. He can interpret dream. I've had an experience. I've tasted of it. And the cup bearer was able to sponsor Joseph in that instance. How then can we harness the sponsorship capital? It's about value. Hallelujah. It's wanting to be ambitious. I want to get to the top table. 
It's not about getting there, it's staying there. And how do you stay there? You have to continue to bring value. Value, value to the table. Paul was writing to Timothy. He said, be diligent in this matter. Give yourself wholeheartedly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Be diligent. There is no, you can't be casual. A second of being casual can destroy an organization. A second of posting the wrong thing about organization or social media can create a lot of reputational damage. Up there in the top tier, you cannot be casual. You have to keep a straight head. You have to be focused. You know, like I always um, uh, jokingly tell my, my old guy, Dr. Shola, uh, the reward of good work is always more work. And it's scriptural. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 16. You saw the story of the talents, for example. The one that was diligent in doing it faithfully, even though it looks like a small task. They had more. And I like Proverbs 22, verse 29. The message translation. Observe people who are good at their work. Skilled workers are always in demand and admired. Have you heard before that there are no opportunities? Well, from what I can see from the word of God, opportunities are everywhere. As we're all seated here, there are opportunities. Every time you come out, wherever, there are always opportunities. But the problem is always, are we able to identify these opportunities and leverage on them? But the scripture is telling us, skilled people, people who are diligent, who do their work effectively, they are always in demand. Organizations are always looking for them. Sponsors will always want to push them forward for the next level. They are always admired. These people, they don't take the back seat, no. They are proactive. Ah, pastor, we've done the, the room now. What's the next project? Very proactive. Ah, pastor, we have 20 likes on that social media. Okay, that looks good, but that's a level. What's the next level? Always proactive. Hallelujah. It's about results. It's about what? Result. It's about delivering on the project. Performance. And as I was doing my research, I, I observed that actually there are four stages of performance. Remember, it's about growing upwards. You cannot be comfortable in one level. Hallelujah. Stage one performance. You are new. You are like the little fry. You are new to the organization. You are like the grasshopper. You just came in. So you are a learner. You are still learning the trade. You are helping people. You are a helper. Hallelujah. It means that you work with supervision. People supervise you. You need a supervisor to work. You work dependently. You are fully dependent. People guide you. They hold your hand. That is a level. But it's anti-scripture to remain in that level. Hallelujah. You want to progress to the next level, which is stage two of performance. In stage two of performance, you've learned your craft. You've learned skills. You've learned expertise. Now you are a contributor. You can contribute. You can pick even bigger projects and, and start, start them and finish them and produce results. In other words, in stage two of performance, you can work independently. You, don't need, you need minimum supervision. Pastor can come and say, this is what we want to do. This is where we want to go. You pick an idea. You run with it. Hallelujah. Independently. The next thing is, oh, pastor, it is done. Stage two of performance, you are a contributor. But as good as that may be, there's another level, which is stage three. In stage three, you've developed competence to the level where you cannot start coaching others. You cannot start guiding others. You cannot start mentoring others. You cannot start managing a team. You can manage a project. Here, it's not about working um, independently, but now you are working interdependently. It takes a village. You are working with a group of people. You are able to identify strength of people. Square peg in a square hole, round peg in a round hole. You are, you are able to develop the emotional intelligence to, you, to maximize the, the potential of people. Stage three, interdependently, a mentor, a guide. But you see, that is a level. They see a level that is further than that. Stage four, performance. Now you are a pathfinder. You set direction for the company. You come up with new ideas. Oh, AI is coming. I think we should be going in this direction. You turn the table. You are now a sponsor as well in stage four of performance. And that is the challenge we should give to ourselves. That we want to continually progress. Don't be a helper forever. Don't be a consumer forever. It is anti-scriptural. Get to a point where you are a contributor. Get to a point where you start discipling people. Get to a point where you start bringing ideas of your own. Hallelujah. And I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. 
Secondly, communicate clearly. Pastor was teaching us last, last Sunday about the power of meditation. And I think he mentioned something that the final stage of med- meditation is that you start doing what? Professing scriptures. Very fantastic. And we are very good at professing scripture. What God cannot do does not exist. It's wonderful. Yeah, I am powerfully and fearfully made. Fantastic. And most times we can make all this confession in a closed room. When we are in church, the Christian language is so strong. Perhaps we are at home, we're looking, watching worship songs. Oh, we profess scripture. But something we are even myself, we, we shall change ourselves, is that we don't talk enough about ourselves. About our abilities and the things that we do, the little, little things that we do. Hallelujah. You know, I went to a conference a few months ago and the person made a profound statement. It is not bragging if it is based on facts. It's not bragging. The facts about the things that I do, my contributions, why should I show shame myself? And that's why I like First John 1 verse 1 so much. He said the things that our eyes have seen, the things that our ears have heard, most importantly, the things that our hands have handled. You have managed a project. You can, cognate, you can coordinate birthday for your children. Why are you not talking about those? Why are you not saying those things in those small talks? Because your sponsor can only sponsor what they know about you. Because remember, they are putting their reputation on the line. So every opportunity you have, that's why I always say, it doesn't matter whether it is one second encounter or two minutes encounter. Make sure that if the person is a potential sponsor, you don't leave that meeting without them knowing something new about you. Ah, Pastor, hi, good morning, good morning. How are you doing? How are you, doing? Ah, you know that last week we, we went for a picnic, I organized everything. Pastor now know. As a church, we want to go for a picnic. Who is a good organizer? Sir, I know someone. Hallelujah. I know someone. Talk about yourself. What are you good at? Be vocal. Uh, you know, I was just saying last, uh, during the first service as well, I think we had an event um, in the uni few, I think last week. And there was somebody I saw, like, ooh. She said, Pastor, like, ooh, okay. But honestly, I was seeing her for the first time. But she said she had been very regular in the church. I said, please, next time you come to church, don't leave without coming to say hi. Because it's in the small talks. Are you learning a new skill? Make sure that you talk about it. The next thing, be proactive. Okay? Be proactive. Like I said, the, the sponsorship, most times, it, some will happen organically, but most times it will happen inorganically. You have to take that step of faith. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 5, 15 to 16. It says, be very careful then how you live your life. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity. Opportunities are always there. As you are sitting in that bus stop and your head is down with that phone, there is a potential sponsor by your left, a potential sponsor by your right. Hallelujah. As you are spending 24 hours just on Instagram, like, on like, like, on like, on like, there are sponsors on Instagram that you should be looking at their work. Hallelujah. Am I talking to myself? Hallelujah. Be proactive. Act in faith. Be wise. Because opportunities, there are people that are climbing and climbing every day. And as believers, we have an added advantage because we have God in us. The God in us is the advantage that we have. Let's be proactive and use it efficiently. Next, let's ask for regular feedback. That is why once you have your sponsor, like I said, your sponsor is somebody you identify, they align with your, with your area of belief, they align with the area of the work that you're going to you'll be doing. You, perhaps there are people that you admire from a distance, or you've seen them stand up, perhaps for people from ethnic minority. And you say, oh, that person can also vouch for me. That person can also, uh, also stand up for me. How can I network with them? How can I reach out to them? It could just be you meet them in a conference. Oh, I like what you do. Oh, actually, I've been working on something very similar. Now they know about you. At times, you, then you want to formalize that relationship. So is it possible it's just two minutes of your time? Perhaps once a year. Perhaps twice every, every year. We just sit down. I will give you progress on the things that I'm doing. And then you give me feedback. Oh, I want to get to level X. How can I get there? They give you feedback. Feedback is important. Proverbs 15, 31 to 32. He said, whoever heeds life given... Oops. Okay. <laughs> okay. Whoever gi- heeds life given... Uh, corrections will be at home among the wise. Those who disregard discipline despise themselves. But the one who uses correction gains understanding. Hallelujah. Perhaps you are unable to find a sponsor. Perhaps you are unable to identify a sponsor. Our greatest sponsor of all is God. 
He's always advocating for us. He's always speaking for us. He's always representing us in rooms where we have no voice. He's able to carry our case forward. The Bible says he's the one that directs our steps. He's the one that delights in our every need. Hallelujah. Where he looks as if you are voiceless. You are not voiceless because God is your voice. He's vouching for you. He's speaking for you. He's taking your destiny to the next level. He's taking your talent to the next level. He's giving you new ideas and new, new grace on the things to do. He's opening doors for you. Hallelujah. He's closing doors that needs to be closed and opening new doors that needs to be opened in the name of Jesus. What is your action? Trust the Lord. Seek his will in everything that you do. Yeah? Let prayer always communicate with him. And I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. Finally, every sponsor was once a sponsoree. Someone sponsors someone to become a sponsor. Once you get there, even today, can you be a sponsor to somebody else? He said, therefore, Galatians 6 verse 10, as we have opportunity, let us continue to do good to all people, especially those in the household of faith. Can you sponsor somebody? Can you be a If a sponsor shows up today, are we ready? Our work, do they have the integrity? Do they have the, uh, the, the seriousness for somebody to carry them forward? Are we casual? The little things that God gives to us, the little projects in our hands, do they have the rights and results that somebody can say, ah, if you can deliver on this level, you are ready for the next level. And I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. Let's bow ahead even as we begin to pray. God's word has not come to condemn us, but to give us that eye, that vision, that foresight, that we should not put glass ceiling on ourselves. We should not just cap ourselves to a limit. No, the top is made for everybody. We can all climb to the top, but every day we want to take action. Every day we want to be proactive. We want to have the right mindset, not be grasshoppers. No, not be small fries. No, we can start as little grasshopper, but Lord, I will not remain there. In the name of Jesus, give me the confidence, the, the, the insight, oh God, to identify the right sponsor in the name of Jesus, that your name will be glorified. Be thou exalted, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name we'll pray. And then I rock of ages will pray, myself included, that Lord, O oh God, you will help us, O oh God, to maximize every opportunity that you bring our way in the name of Jesus. May we not be negligent in the work that you've given to us, but help us to excel, that your name will be glorified in Jesus' mighty name we'll pray. Amen. Amen. Can we just bow our heads and talk to God in prayers? Let's commit the servant of God that he's used this afternoon to bless us into his hands. Let's tell the Lord to make him a sponsor and raise sponsors for him. He would move from the level he is to another. And by extension, let's pray for ourselves that the word of God would bear fruit in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. It's time for offering. Offering time. Offering time. All right, we have the ushers uh, by your side. If you need an envelope, please signify and they would uh, hand one over to you. And on the envelope, you would have a box, a little box you can take if you are a UK taxpayer. So the church, as a charity organization, can claim uh, a token from all the taxes you pay to the government. And if you are watching us online, or you may want to do a transfer, the bank details are on the screen. You can make your transfer to the church account. Uh, let's pray for our offerings. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, we pray you would bless the token we brought before you. We pray, dear Lord, that in blessings you will, rest, you will return blessings upon us in Jesus' name. We will not lack what to give and will not lack when we call upon you, Lord. Thank you because we know you've answered our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible in Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for peace and well-being, 
are not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. And we know that our anchor scripture tells us that our light shines bright and bright onto a perfect day. And I want to remind you that peradventure, certain things are going on in your life and you're beginning mm -hmm. to doubt the word of God. Never second guess his word. As long as he's spoken it, it will come to pass. Amen.
of Egypt and they saw the Red Sea. Did he make a way for them? It was not a conventional way, but he made a way. But he made a way. I am about to say, you may be standing at your Red Sea. Hey, Jesus, whatever your plan is, you make a way for whatever your will is. that we give you the honor that is due to you. I can see some new faces. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Anyone that today is your first time in the place of victory. Hallelujah. Amen. I can see some people, you know, just take it a bit, you know. One of the things that when you're dealing with people, right, you will know who is a newcomer without even asking are you a newcomer. You know why? The newcomers will just keep their face straight. <laughs> You will not come, you must not come here today. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So praise God. If today is your very first time in the place of victory, you just do well to wave your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Anybody? Hallelujah. Amen. Could you do us one more favor and just rise? You're not the only one. There are some other people that I can see around, but they just keep their face straight like this. But anyways. We just want to celebrate you, to love on you. Hallelujah. So church family, do me a favor. Let's go celebrate our sister. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 
Even for those who are online, you're not left out. There is a barcode on the screen there. Just do well to scan it, fill in your details. The idea behind this is just to get to know you and how we can also be a blessing to you and your family. Hallelujah. As earlier announced by the grace of God, the theme of this month is our month of unhindered progress. And by the grace of God, nothing will resist my advancement and your advancement in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. As a church, we've got various activities that we involve ourselves in to keep ourselves edified in the things of God. On a Monday is our Monday morning devotions from 6 a.m. in the morning to 7 a.m. And on a Wednesday and a Friday, the timings are the same, 6.30 to 8 p.m. But on a Wednesday, we have our Bible study. And on a Friday, we have our prayer meetings. Praise God. And on a Sunday like this, by the grace of God, we have two services, 10 a.m. to 11.30. And we have Sunday school from 11.45 to 12.25. And the second service, which we are part of now, is from 12.30 to 2 p.m. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, on a Tuesday, we have what we call our Youth in Christ Fellowship. It's a different expression of the church, but this one is tailored for those who are in university or who are college students from the ages of 16 to 21 plus. Hallelujah. Again, should you know anyone that is in, within this category, do well to encourage them to attend. And God would bless you all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. As a church, we have our men's fellowship as well. We meet twice in a month for our prayers. Every second and fourth Saturdays of the month. And it's from 9 p.m. to 9.15 p.m. Praise God. Now, we have our, what we call our night of worship and prayer. is the last Friday of every month where we just gather together to pray the promises of God into our lives, to prepare for the coming month. Praise God. By the grace of God, the theme for this segment is the doors are opened. Hallelujah. Amen. So come Friday, this Friday evening from the times of 10 p.m. to 12, 15 a.m. By the grace of God, we'll be meeting virtually. And we trust that indeed that God will open doors that no one can shut in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Also, the coming week, which is the 6th of April, by the grace of God, as we are celebrating Easter, we are also having our worship conf our worship concert hallelujah praise god the arise concert and the theme is the resurrection and the life hallelujah time is from 6 p.m in the evening to 9 p.m so please encourage your friends your family to do well to attend and god will bless you in jesus name now can i also encourage for those of us who are workers in the house of god when you're coming on that day if you can pack on the road that will be most appreciated only because it's in the evening, it's going to be dark. So we need as much parking space for other church members to be able to park in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. You know, I was raised in a home where if you only have two seats in the house, when the guest comes, you should be able to leave the seat available for the guest. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay. And so also for the Arise concert, they are seeking for male drama volunteers. Should you want to be part of this in any capacity, please do well to see Sister Frances. She's at the back there. Hallelujah. And God will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, we are aware of a number of people who are fallen victims of um, academic misconduct on account of using AI to do their referencing or to do their thesis. Again, this is not what AI is designed to accomplish, but we encourage members in attempt to avoid these things always seek good counsel hallelujah in this case look for a mentor hallelujah praise the name of the lord hallelujah and we have good mentors in our midst praise the name of the lord by the grace of god we are blessed with academics even for people who are able to even do guidance for uh, you doing your dissertation and God will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. And so we have our lecturers and our miss, Dr. Shola and Dr. Austin. And I'm aware Sister Iman as well does something of that nature. Hallelujah. So again, we encourage you to please, uh, rather, you know, as they say, don't cry over spilled milk. 
in order to avoid tears, let us seek counsel beforehand. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. As a church, we have the Samaritan basket. It's an initiative to promote kindness in our midst. And so we encourage members, when you go to do your grocery shopping, buy one or two items, drop them in the basket. And anyone who sees an item of interest, you are at liberty to take whatever you please. And God would bless you in Jesus' mighty name. By the grace of God, the temple project is in the last phase of the project. Praise the name of the Lord. And should you want to be part of this, there's a separate bank details on the screen. Um, the church media room and the teenage church is completed. So after church, do well to take a stroll. Go upstairs and see what it looks like. God is indeed doing wonders in our midst. Hallelujah. Praise God. As a church, we have what we call the Place of Victory podcast where we host all the sermons that are preached here in church. As encouragement, we are please ask that you go on these platforms, like, you can share, comment, subscribe, but also share with your friends and family. This could be a blessing to one or two, at least for today's sermon even, it would definitely be a blessing to someone who is progressively minded in Jesus' name. Amen. Should you want to volunteer as a worker in the house of God, um, you can scan the barcode as well and further details will be passed across to you. But for those who have already registered, training continues today by 3 p.m. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Anyone in need of counseling of any sort, better it be academic parenting, health care, sorry, health, your career, scan the barcode and an appointment will be sent across to you. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you've got anything that you want the prayer team to continue to pray on your behalf, just write your prayer requests down. Put them at the prayer request box. The prayer department, they always constantly offer prayers unto God. And yours will be heard in Jesus' name. To so stay in touch with the church, these are the various channels. And God will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us rise as we take our confession for the month. Amen. Praise God. Okay, let's say together one to go. As the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus... I declare that in this month, my path is like the early morning sun. It shines brighter and brighter. Therefore, through God's word and the spirit of the Holy Spirit, I know what to do. I know the right steps to take. And I make tremendous progress in matters that pertain to my destiny in spite of any opposition because God is with me. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we just begin to commit our week before the Lord? Begin to ask the things that you want the Lord to do for you, knowing that he would hear your prayers in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Let's just share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and his mercies will follow us all the days of our lives. We dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. God bless you all and have a wonderful week. Amen.